All right, to be fair, the CW is kind of an albatross. It's never really made any money, and it's got, uh, well, somewhat limited appeal. It's also not had a consistent stable of quality programming. So, hmm, what did it really have going for it? Well, it seemed like people wanted to believe that it was valuable, and to some extent, it, it kind of is, or it kind of was, or it might be more valuable in the future. But it does take a competent steward to lead a company like that to profitability, or at least that particular network. Is that company actually Nexstar? Because we've been talking about this for a while on my channel, and I thought, hey, it's a pretty good marriage. I think it could be the right choice. I think it could be the right direction. And everybody pulled the trigger. So now that the dust is cleared and we've reached the point at which Nexstar owns the majority, 75% of the CW, let's examine this deal a little bit. Let's dive into it, see, uh, see if uh, it was worth Nexstar taking the deal they couldn't refuse. Here we go. <laughs> So now that there's been a little bit of time to uh, digest everything that's uh, that's happened and some time has passed and the new CW has started to emerge as its own entity now, at least under the Nexstar brand, we can really see the former CW as the scam that it was. I think it's been pretty readily revealed to everyone just why this thing was in business in the first place. And by now, you've probably heard that the CW has been run since its inception in 2006, I think, if I remember right. It's been it's been run to lose money. That's right. Uh, it bought content from the two studios, uh, the obviously uh, Warner and Paramount now, and uh, it it spent as much as uh, two dollars for every dollar that was taken in. That's, well, that's bad, <laughs> and I don't think I have to say it, but it's not a sound business strategy to lose money like that. And uh, if not making money is your goal, what is your goal? Is it laundering money? I don't know. I'm not going to say that directly. I'm just going to, you know, throw it out there like a question. <laughs> to be fair, the deal here uh, was an offer that nobody would have refused. In, in fact, uh, honestly, I would have taken the deal. I could probably use a network uh, because it was mostly upside. There wasn't a lot of downside other than the fact that I'd have to take the rest of it off their hands uh, down the road. And we'll get to that in a minute. But Nexstar was actually paid to take control of the CW. You see, Warner and Paramount still have, uh, like I've mentioned about... 12.5% each of their grubby hands in the pot. Uh, but in the end, ultimately, Nexstar was paid the equivalent of $54 million to take the CW off of their hands. And you're like, culture, you're crazy. Well, in order for that to sink in properly, I'm going to present it in a different way. Warner and Paramount gave 75% of the CW to an affiliate station owner, Nexstar, for zero dollars. That's a lot. Now, we're going to clear up a few things along the way that should be noted, and I think some people have largely ignored when it comes to this deal. Because all the, the dollars and cents and everything, you know, we can see that and laugh at it and point at it and say, ah, money laundering or whatever our you know, speculatives are, our speculations are. But uh, the studios weren't actually losing money on the CW. They weren't. The CW was losing the money. And the studios were getting paid uh, by Netflix for the content that they were also putting on the CW. So they were double dipping and making some money on that. And they were also collecting revenues from uh, these shows uh, for their international distributions. Uh, those same shows were valuable in other locales, countries, whatever. That was going to have to change at some point. So the deal with Netflix was just not renewed because the studios wanted to take back their own programming to put on their own streaming services, which makes a lot of sense. Although I don't see a lot of value in the Berlanti-verse, but hey, personal opinion there. Um, 
those same streaming services, uh, again, we're talking about, you know, obviously Paramount and Warner streaming services, are expanding internationally. So they don't need conflicts uh, with the, the offerings that they have on their streaming services in those countries. So they take the international distribution rights back and distribute them themselves on these new expanded streaming channels. So, yeah. Basically, that made it so that the CW was not needed anymore and was probably going to be an anchor. So here comes the hard part, um, at least for whoever ended up with it, the CW, that is, uh, how to make money. Well, I can say this for next star. It's not going to be it's not going to be easy. Uh, they're going to take some uh, they're going to take some money that they're getting from a, a land deal, or I guess they already have done that. And uh, they're going to turn that into operating capital for uh for this new network or this revitalized network or this newly acquired network that's probably the right way to say it so uh the cw is right now stuck with 12 shows through the 2022 2023 season which will wrap up here you know obviously around summer or end of summer uh depending upon the way where the calendar ends for a lot of these shows uh after that it's going to be uh the whole new path forward without the berlanti verse i hope well, I mean, probably, right? Um, and if Nexstar wants to, um, they can move forward with any scripted programming that they can afford. And I imagine that they probably will. And everything that they have to do going forward is going to have to be much, much cheaper. So they will have to also look outward to monetize beyond the, the network itself, which I imagine they'll be able to do rather easily, just like obviously the studios were doing selling off to Netflix and international distribution. So you just become another content house on top of, you know, the, the, a network, which is what you should have been doing all the time. So hopefully networks, uh, excuse me, Net, Nexstar is going to uh, is going to push forward quickly there. I think that there will likely be a glut of unscripted programming on uh, the new network uh, from the start. I think it kind of has to. Um, unscripted is much, much cheaper to produce. Um, there's a ton of upside um, and you can redistribute that as well. Um, they'll slowly over time probably build up a, a pretty decent catalog of scripted programming, I would imagine. And again, they'll be able to take that and license it outward uh, over the next few years. That, again, is a great way to monetize beyond what you produce uh, for your network because you just go outside, sell it to somebody else. What's um, fascinating to me here may not be fascinating to any of you or maybe just a few of you, but it's that... If Nexstar wants, they can go out and wholly own CW as early as August of 2024. So it's not, it's, it's a tiny little window. They could they could get this deal done uh, where, you know, the other two studios are out, which I think would be desirable if they can get there. But they are going to be in, in a position where they're going to be forced to take that other 25% on as early as June of, uh, or excuse, as late, excuse me, as of June uh, 2026. Um, that 2026 number uh, will probably be what both Paramount and uh, Warner uh, want to happen. And I think if you're next star, you want to uh, you want to get them out of the room as quickly as possible and not participating in your effort to gain profit faster. I think they have a pretty decent chance of finally getting this network to be on the right side of the ledger, you know, where you're not just writing a bunch of red ink all the time. And I think that's probably sooner rather than later. I guess for whatever reason, I have some pretty high hopes that this is going to be a good venture for next star. I thought that way from the very beginning. I'd hate to be proven wrong. Hopefully they have competent management and it seems like they actually do. But hey, what do you think? Did you see or do you see uh, this the CW existing without the Berlanti verse in the coming year? You think that that'll make it a more successful enterprise? <laughs> do you see a future where um, CW produces uh, lower budget originals that are actually worth watching? And I uh, guess finally, will um, the CW's own streaming app actually add to its profitability? Because we didn't get a chance to visit on that, and they do have their own additional mechanisms for distribution uh, for OTT, etc, etc. So good questions all I think. And I, if you'd like, feel free to answer them down below. I think this is a pretty good conversation to have. And I think that there is a lot of room. Well, there's a lot of room there to um, 
uh, to talk about it. I think that uh, I think that uh, we're going to see if you can take something that's been torn down by the industry and abused and used and turn it into uh, something worthwhile. I, I think the CW's exactly that. And with that, I'm going to encourage you to, you know, support other independent creators out there. They absolutely could use your support. And uh, all, all you have to do is, uh, well, subscribe to their channel. Hit the like button, uh, share, comment. All those things help with the algorithm. And uh, I'll just leave it at that and say, be sure to take care of yourself. Take care of others. Wash your hands, of course, because it's good hygiene. And until next time, bye. And don't forget to check out my Rumble at rumble.com slash culture casino. Thanks for visiting today. Be sure you're subscribed and hit that for alerts. Yay! Of course, like and share all of the videos that you can as it helps with the algorithm. Have a great day.